Your camera's kind of high. You got a lot of headroom. Is that how you like it? What do you mean? Like there's a My lot of room above your head. I know, but that's yeah. This is the only way. I just Did I can't do. I can't do anything. I can't move. Oh, okay. Oh. So. I know you want to see my boobs, but I can't go any higher. <laughs> and if I move back, then you can't hear me as well. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Diary of an Ex Ho. I'm Sherry Hardman. I'll be your ex ho. And today's guest is Nate Jackson. So sit back, get ready to enjoy the episode, and remember the old saying. Always a bridesmaid when you're a hoe. I'm Nate Jackson. Uh, I'm from Lacey, Washington, currently reside in Tacoma, Washington. I am heterosexual and I'm a single male. Uh, all right. I'm glad you're here. First thing we always do is a Mary Shag kill. And I make it specific to each person. So let me go get that. Is this a clean show? No. Oh, okay. But they say like the first 10 minutes, you really shouldn't swear. That's true. So the I shag, tried it. Mary Shag killed through me off. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. You can see that, right? Yes. All right. So you're going to marry one. You're going to shag one. You're going to kill one. And we have comedy club edition all women that have been at your club who are you going to marry who are you going to shag who are you going to kill kill lunell marry sherry shag tiffany oh you didn't even hesitate at all huh <laughs> what, what you mean <laughs> well some people like agonize for a while but you instantly knew who you wanted to kill and uh well, I know all three of them personally, so it wasn't right, that hard. So, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Nate Jackson's super funny comedy club here in Tacoma, Washington, on Thursday, July 11th, Diary of an Ex Ho will be live and in person, the comedy show version. So be sure to get your tickets. And then real quick here, watch a little preview of how it works, and then we'll get back to Nate Jackson. <laughs> Well, I have a podcast and I interview comedians about their sex life. So we're going to do a version of that here, okay? Uh, if you have a question that you want to ask one of the comedians about their sex life, you can send it there. And then I'll pick a couple of you guys that send them for a prize. There's also the option of writing your own little two-sentence host story. So, so please send those in. It makes the last half of the show a lot more fun, all right? Carol, if you had a dollar for every guy you kissed, what could you buy? <laughs> so I thought I might tell some of you what I think you're like in bed, all right? I think this guy over here against the wall, he likes to rap to himself in the mirror just to get in the mood. He agrees, yeah. And she looks like she likes to listen to Taylor Swift during sex, so. Yeah. This guy here looks really manly, but all he really wants is for his nipples to be sucked. I can tell, yeah. So this person made me actually Google something I had never heard before. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I guess you can teach an old hoe new I tricks. hope I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, Andy Vargo, have you ever been to the glory holes? <laughs> I haven't been back. <laughs> Do you think you could take off my underwear with no hands? I, I think it depends. Uh, where, where you I are. don't wear Depends. <laughs> I fucked my high school bully's dad last weekend. <laughs> yeah! Who's that for? I, I love that. 
It's like I love full, it too. It's like full circle. It's like it's not my dad will beat up your dad. It's like I'll fuck your dad. <laughs> All right. Uh, when it comes to sex, would you rather watch or be watched? Watch. Why? Because I'm fat. Don't be looking oh. at my fat ass. <laughs> Shit, I'd rather watch somebody else than to know I got <laughs> voyeurs. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you were like when you were a kid, what did your parents call private parts? Uh, I don't know. They didn't. Maybe my dad was like, "Your dick," or my my mom was like, "Go clean your privates." I don't know. We there was no okay. Wasn't necessarily a bunch of uh, private part talk in my house, but you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you, uh, your parents are still together, are they? Yeah. Or no? No, they're together still. All right. So were they good um, role models of how a relationship would be or should be, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're still married to this day. That's like, I don't know, 57, 58 years of marriage. So they're great wow. examples of what it could look like. Right. So how, watching them, how has that affected you and your relationships? Uh, I mean, it makes you want to do the best parts that you've seen examples of and then avoid the parts that you aren't fond of that you see acted out. You know what I mean? A lot of times people can learn from what they don't want to do again. You know what I mean? It's like the reason like <laughs> a fatherless child can be or a, a fatherless child can end up being a great dad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. OK, so now I'm going to uh, talk to you about what I call like your sexual awakening. So like when you first realized like there's something going on in this world that I didn't really know before, whether it was just feelings in your body or something somebody told you, can you kind of tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I was in high school um, and I can't remember what happened. I think like there was a girl that was like promiscuous, she was a hoe. Right. And I lost my virginity late, I think, 17, especially mm -hmm. being a popular kid. Like everybody around me had already, they were either lying and saying they did, or they'd already all lost their virginity. I was still getting hand jobs and shit like that. But um I I went and I messed with this girl and lost my virginity. And she was convinced that there was no way I was a virgin based on my performance. And <laughs> uh and she ended up bragging and running her mouth about how I put it down and how how big my dick was and all this stuff. And I was like, doc, it was literally my first. And so she ushered mm -hmm. me into my little sexual awakening and be like, oh man, I do know what I'm doing. And oh, man, I am, I am, I am. It's, uh, and she's been with a bunch of guys. So to, for her to be like, you big, I was like, oh my God. So um, yeah, I think that that would be the awakening. And then and as far as like, oh, I can do this and be good at it or whatever. As far as like actually like having sex like regularly mm -hmm. i would say that happened not until i got to college like once i was at you know three years later or so 19 20 21 at eastern washington university is when it started going down mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um do you have any celebrity crushes when you were young yeah some of them I, the couple are still still going i like um uh fancy from the jamie fox show i like um megan good sanai lathan is number one um and then uh yeah those are my crushes okay um can you think of any like mainstream movie that had like a sex scene or a love scene that you thought was hot uh hot yeah i don't know about hot i thought love and basketball was like a cool moment in time it captured like when they lost their virginities to each other like the way they captured that was uh well i can't even say they lost them to each other but when she lost her virginity to to the when sanai lathan lost her virginity to um brother epps it looked so authentic. You felt like you were there and you were experiencing it. Like that was, they made it, they did it in a way where it was like, 
okay, that's cool. I don't know if there's anything where I'm like, man, I seen somebody back get blown out and I'm like, that was dope. Monsters Ball, maybe Halle Berry getting worked, but mm. I, I don't know. I've heard I've heard it, that one before a couple times. I just don't know if there's too many mainstream examples of somebody getting, you know, handled. Maybe right. uh maybe uh uh soul food where the uncle had that affair with the cousin that came to visit town in like a closet or they were just like rushing to have sex maybe that one uh four you know, brothers you know, what, Tyrese... you know what the two sorry no no you're good i was saying in four brothers tyrese had sex in the laundry room with um with uh uh with his crazy latina chick like she just was doing stuff like sitting on the dryer and starting the cycle and being like come here <laughs> it's like oh wow so maybe that one yeah uh, I mean, what I was going to say was just the two most common that I get, like on this show, is Titanic and um, Top Gun. I don't even remember those movies having sex scenes. <laughs> Hilarious. I know. Uh, do you watch porn? Yeah, but not, I'm not, I'm not one of them guys that's like, I'm not all, I'm not a porny guy. I don't know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, do you have like a go-to category that you're willing to admit to? Uh, usually like head or back shots, light skinned women. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you think any porn that you've watched, you think it's affected your life in any way? Um, yeah, early on, some of them ones with kind of lingus in it. I'm like, oh, that's how you're supposed to eat vagina. And oh, I so you used it as a instructional. Yeah. And all I did was how to all I learned was how to do it wrong because they're doing it for performance. <laughs> I don't think I don't know too many women that are down to get smashed like porn porn stars be smashing. They're like, you know, everybody's like, slow down, good guy. This isn't porn. <laughs> and, but you know, I yeah. They can get you going, you know. But it's usually like and by myself. I've never like sat and watched porn with a partner or anything like that. Mm-hmm. What's your definition of amazing sex? Um, I think sex is amazing when the lady has a bunch of, like she's having orgasms more than one. And I feel like I'm the reason that she's having them. And then I feel, you know, then, then I, then I get loose too. You know what I mean? Uh huh. You're being very vulnerable. I'm, I love this. All right. We're going to switch it up now. We're going to go to the wheel of dirty questions. You only have to answer one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me get that. All right. Oh. Here we go. That's a cool wheel. Would you rather be the spanker or the spanky? Spanker. <laughs> Not into anybody spanking you, huh? No, I want to know whose is it. I don't want to be yelling out someone else's name. <laughs> uh, how's your body image? What's that mean? Like, how do you feel about your body? I'm working on it. I'm not in shape like I want to be. I've been in shape before. I know I'm not that right now. So I'm working on it. Plus, I feel like even career-wise, like the more in fighting trim we are, the you know, the, I think it moves the needle professionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten on your naked body? Uh, none that I can believe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You look, I just love you. You look great. Let me see that tummy. Like all that shit is like, okay, you think you're comforting me, but what do you mean? Don't touch my tummy. Come get some dick. Don't, don't be rubbing all on my stomach. So you don't like your stomach to be touched. That makes you feel self-conscious. I mean, I'm fat, Chariot. I'm, I don't know. I, maybe there's guys out there that don't want to be feeling like a little teddy bear, but I'm. I don't want all that. Don't be rubbing my. Don't be rubbing the things I'm at the gym actively trying to get rid of. Right. I get that. I used to feel that way, but now, sometimes my husband just holds on to mine, like while we're doing it, and it's hot. So. Okay. Right. Sometimes <laughs> you never know. Right. You gotta love all of yourself. All right. Do you have any sexual regrets? Um, no. No. Sexual, well, no, maybe. I mean, I regret, yeah, I have maybe 
two. Like there was a girl that I was with that was like a close friend of mine's ex. And I like, I wish I didn't do that. He told me mm -hmm. to, to see if it was possible. And it was very possible. Like my, I was shocked at how possible and, and I regret that. Um, then uh, there was a girl that I knew for a very long time, absolutely stunning. And I really wanted to like be with her in one way or the other or whatever. And then we messed around and I, that's when I got, I, that was the only time that I contracted a STD chlamydia and I got it, but I knew right away. I was like, I God damn it. Uh, <laughs> before it even started tingling i was like let me go get checked yeah just the way that it happened it just felt like i was uh i don't know like there's like you have sex and the experience feels like a lot of people ain't been there and then you have sex and you're like oh, okay this is frequent <laughs> this you know what i mean like there's frequent flyer myers on this it's like getting on a plane and getting in your seat and you're like man i feel like a lot of people have been in this chair like it just <laughs> kind of felt just kind of felt you know and so yeah, I regret that. I'm like, man, I should have. And she's absolutely gorgeous. And it literally one of the prettiest people I've ever been with. And I, you know, it's one of the things you're like, well, was it worth it? I don't know, but I I don't think so. I I regret <laughs> being lusty, like, you know, lusting where, you know, I just regret that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, any items left on your sexual bucket list? Anything you want to try you haven't tried? um i'm trying to i want to i want to see what a threesome will be like um i want to do it in some odd places i want to uh i've never been in a relationship where like whatever goes goes you know so i've never been in a relationship where like the sex was just that wild or open or Right here, all right. Right there, all right. I've never had that. Like, it's always been, like, my partners have been more reserved or it's like, all right, finally we're about to do it. You know what I mean? So right. I'd like to have the type of relationship where, like, you know, I where it's all figured out, smooth, and everything is welcome. Um, I'd like that. And, that. and and it's not that I haven't had relationships that are close to that. You know, my, my last relationship, I feel like, um, our sex life was was lit, but you know it also felt like there was room for more. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And it's not necessarily like the frequency. The frequency could have been higher, yes, but more so like the willingness. Like I don't like rejection, like at all. And I understand that like sometimes you're not in the mood, and you don't feel like it, all that. But like, I feel like if I come sniffing around, as busy as I am, like if I come sniffing, right. like let me have right. some. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? But sometimes, you know, that same uh, amount of being busy is the reason why somebody is cold to you, you know? Right. Uh, what's your host song? The song My that when you hear it, a song that when you hear it, it kind of gets your host spirit going. Uh, I don't know. Roe James Permission is one. Uh, host spirit is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um the first five songs that Alexa plays when you be like Alexa play Jodeci, whatever those are. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. But the, I mean, we, we had an R Kelly's TP two album. That was mm -hmm. like the go to sex CD during my college. You know what I mean, like, mm -hmm. I literally had a CD, a boombox with the CD in it, so that when it was sexy time, I just walk over and turn it on and press play, and we start. You know, right. do you still listen to R. Kelly? Uh, not really, actually, but I don't think it's because I'm not willing to, because the music was the music. I can separate his art from his sins, right. but right. I just don't think he's. I don't think streamers are playing him like that. I think they've all resolved to being like no R. Kelly playlists or something. Right. Right. All right. What's your Instagram? Mr. Nate Jackson. Okay. And then uh, let's see, this is going to come. I'm going to put this out at the end of 
right around the end of this month. Is there anything in sp in particular you want to promo about that uh, time? Sure. Um, I'll say this. Um, if this is the type of thing that women watch and then they're like, I'm going to go holler at them, please. Um, let's just go ahead and start with aesthetically my type of woman. I like somebody with a thin build and a big ass butt. We'll start there. So if that ain't you, don't, don't come on around here. Also, please don't be crazy to the motherfucker. If you've ever stalked somebody or popped up on someone, don't come around here. If you don't got your own sense of who you are, your own schedule and your own ways to make yourself happy, don't come around here expecting me to be that. Please find your own happiness. Them the three things for me. And be a good person when you wake up in the morning. How about that? Um, for... Since this is coming out at the end of the month, I'm not particularly sure what day, but I'll say this. At the end of the month, June 28th, I'm in D Detroit, Michigan. Saturday, June 29th, I'm in Toronto, Canada. The first show has sold out. We've added a second show in Toronto. Get your tickets. Uh, the first one sold out almost instantaneously, and the second one is crawling as if they don't even realize there is a, a show's already been added. Uh -huh. So. Take a look. Go to natejacksoncomedy.com to stay tapped into that and all other things in Nate Jackson. And um, I look forward to you guys checking out my comedy, tapping in, and uh, hopefully whatever I've said on this didn't stir up any judgment. We are what we are. All right. Now, before we go, um, first of all, I did want to ask you, like, how has getting fa big famous changed uh, how you get approached from women or changed your love life? Yeah, so it's a new thing that I'm assessing, but apparent like what's happening right now is um there's no more let's just talk or let's get to know each other. Like, you know, like I'm having to slow that women down. Like, hey, it's, you know, let's let's slow down here because uh I don't know. I, I like I've been in the situation where I was the other man or I was the 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 fuck boy, you know, you know, you mm -hmm. know, you have no relationship with them, but it's always a fun time. Like I've been, I, there is no more of that. Like as soon as I'm Googled or a friend says, do you know who that is? Like now all of a sudden I'm yoked in a way where it's let's be in a relationship or I'm like, I, nobody was talking about that. I had a girl who used to crush on me. I bumped into her and I didn't even holler. Like she was just like, I think we should start dating and it would be good for the community. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, it's like, we'd be a power couple, the things I can do and the things you could do. I was like, man, I'm not even attracted to you. Like, what are you talking about? But mm -hmm. in her mind, she's already created this, this relationship with the community. Um, yeah, so it's different. I mean, I had a, um, you know, they, like my schedule is posted. You know what I mean? There's no, if I want privacy or, you know, popping up on me is, it's easy, you know? And so I think it takes self-control on the female's part not to just be like, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to say, I'm just going to go. You know what I mean? And so I get that. Um, and then let's say it's not even in a dating situation. Like this happened yesterday, actually. Yesterday, I was at a restaurant and this girl walked in and she looked at me and then she kept walking and then she stopped in her tracks two steps later. And she whipped around and she was like, oh, my God, um, I'm I'm going to your show in Vegas on July, on July. Uh, no, she's I'm going to your show on July 13th. And I was like, oh, OK, now I don't have my full schedule memorized. I'm looking up right now because my calendar is on the wall. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. OK, cool. What city is that? She's like, Vegas. It's Vegas. I'm like, oh, my bad. OK, yeah, that's going to be off the chain. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and and mind you, I knew exactly who she was. We went to college together, right? She was a friend of a friend. And I know I know her by first and last name. And she was like, she started to be like, like her face was changing from like, yeah, yeah. Like from excitement to like confusion to like, why? Like, you don't know your, about your show. You don't know who I am. You don't know why it's cool that I'm going. And like, do you know who I am? I was like, yeah, why are you acting like that? Like, we went to school together. You don't know who I am. I was like, you know, and I said her full name. I'm like, I'm like, I, I, you know, I, I'll leave it anonymous. But, you know, I was just like, you know, uh, you know, Jane Doe, what the fuck? Why are you looking at me like that? Then she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I just, it just seemed like you didn't know who I was like. 
see, I'm the same person and you're acting different. People say, don't forget the little people and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, we went to school. I know who you are. I saw you every day for three years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, at, during the day and at party. Like, I know who you are. You're shit, you're Jane Doe. What do you... So that dynamic is just different to where like people see, uh, you know, they see a rise in career and then some of their own assessments of self and stuff come into play. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting a lot of, you know, well, what are you, what am I bringing to the table? Like that conversation is, <laughs> it happens a lot. Um, I've been called a high value man more times this year than I've ever heard in my life, ever heard in my life. Oh, he's, oh, he's a high value man, high value man, high value. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and I'm 40 with no kids and things are going great career wise. Um, there's some stuff I'd like to, you know, clean up or make smoother, you know, as far as the comedy club goes and stuff like that. But overall things are going well. And I think that an outsider looking in sees name on building name on sign behind stage sees what, you know, my new car or is aware of new house. And it, I, it, I'm not getting the genuine person. I, I get the representative. You know what I mean? The, and, right. and there's some women who are like, I am what I am. I am myself and I'm not bending or breaking or changing or being malleable for anybody. You either fit or you don't fit. Right. And then there's other women that are like, I will be whatever my man needs. Right. And they're not even themselves anymore. They're so malleable to the point that it's like, mm -hmm. who are you? You know what I'm saying? Have you lost your sense of self trying to just be what you think I need? Right. So then it becomes an interview. Like, what do you like in a woman? What do you want in a woman? How do you want your woman to be? And then they put that outfit on, right? And it's all good until some stressful situation happens and then the rubber hits the road and they're like, I've been doing this and acting like this and da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da for you and it ain't... I'm like, yo, I didn't know you were acting like someone you weren't. <laughs> this was yeah. all a facade, you know what I mean? So that's legitimate. Like, I've been in a... Full, I've, as recent... Not, not my most recent relationship, but I've been in relationships, like full relationships with somebody who was acting like what they thought that I wanted or needed to get to the next levels and stage. And then when that didn't happen at the pacing that she wanted, it all exploded in my face and the real her came out with frustration, you know? So I couldn't tell you what, what the solution to this is. I don't know if I'm going to have to go undercover boss to find a good woman, but <laughs> ain't yeah. Well, it sounds like the more visible you are, the less people really see you. Yeah, they see what oh. they think I am. And also, a lot... Um, how else can I put it? How can I put it? Um, I have friends and people close to me, but what I desire for the back half of the year is friends and people close to me that aren't on my payroll. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's right. kind of profound when you look around your birthday party and it's like people are like, should I be clocked in? <laughs> like that's how bad. <laughs> like, damn, am I uh, a party? So I I would like, you know what I mean? So then I'm not questioning the genuineness of it, or people are just being yes men, yes women, because they're like, I, you know, my check depends on this answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um I would like that. And I don't know how that comes about. They say you should be around people that are doing better than you or I don't know what that means. I don't know how to say you're doing better than one person or the other, but you know, that's what they say. Like, you know, be around. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm supposed to find some empowered friend, empowered, ambitious friend group or some shit, but I would like to not be paying everyone that's around me the most. That would right. be cool. right. Um, Cause it's like, yeah, I have company, but at the same time, I'm like, if the money dried up, yeah, you know I mean like 56 mm -hmm. questions, you know, so right. I don't know. I don't know if that if that comes off as like a sad state of the union, but you know, we're it's all good when everyone's together. We're all having fun and all that stuff. But they also have been recently zelled or recently cash apped or recently handed cash. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I don't know. But that that would that would be a thing, and that's the thing that that goes across. That's not just in love life. That's like in just you know business life, friends, just in friend life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I don't know what to tell you as far as and all I know is um, things are going good in comedy. I've strived for 20 years to get my career to where it is today and I am happy with it. And 
it's going to keep going up. Like the opportunities that I'm being afforded now are frankly, you know, surreal, mind blowing. I mean, like this Sunday, because uh, this is pre recorded, I think people know that. So this Sunday for Father's Day is a show in New Jersey at the NJ Pack, right? This is a venue that. I've been to to see a show or talk to a headliner and try to get five minutes on and 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 wasn't successful at it. Um, and it's Earthquake is hosting it, who's one of my favorite comics. It's a it's a multiple comic lineup, and I haven't done very many multi lineups. Um, you know, where it's like four or five headliner type of situations. And then I just got to run a show yesterday. I'm doing forty five minutes in closing. And the other acts on the show are, everyone is headlined at my club. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't had a situation where um, I'm closing yeah. amongst all headliners, you know? Right. And so to be tapped with that is, you know, that's, I mean, it's me, Jay Farrow, Takara Williams, Tony Rock, Earthquake, and they're like, yeah, yeah, Nate's closing. And then I just saw Earthquake's promo yesterday. He says my name with like happiness and and I got my man, Nate. Jack. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like, oh my god. You know so. Um, and to be honest with you, like a lot of the success that I've experienced last year and this year is obviously due to social media and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube taking off. But a lot of the audiences look like the audiences from those networks now, right? Like, so for 20 years, I've been doing comedy. It means 18 of those I've been performing on what I would call the black side of the, of the game. Not like the dark side of the moon, but the right. urban audiences, right? right? And so not anymore. Like, I'm doing these shows, and it's 95% everyone else, and then the 5% is the black people, right? So the difference between... Um, um, now and what the future looks like is the black people tap back in and realize I'm that same guy you loved for 18 years. And now these places are crazy packed. You know what I mean? And so this is with, you know, with, with to be honest, this is a black show. Like this is earthquake and four or five black acts in a b predominantly black city at a, in, in a predominantly black venue booked by a black agent promoted by black promoters. And so it's different than what the last two years has looked like for me. Mm -hmm. So to be thrown, like not necessarily thrown, but to be given closing it out is, is just, you know, that's why, you know, that's just wild to me. You know what I mean, and right. I'm on up with people that I consider peers that I would have without a doubt be perfectly fine with someone else closing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? not feeling like, oh, I need to leave a mark on the show or how come they didn't have me close? But like to just find, just get the lineup and find out I'm closing was like, whoa, okay, some things have changed. Right. You know what I mean? And so I'm really excited about the, about the, about this show on Sunday. And I'm, it just, I just say that to say, you know, I'm happy with where things are. I'm surprised by how fast um, it's happening. And I'm seeing, um, it's, I'm starting to see, how can I? It's like the success I've seen has been due to my own actions and has been outside of the norm of the path that most comics set, right? You expect, you know, you grind, you make a lot of noise, and then they just start handing you stuff. Like, that's what we all are expecting. I'm funny. I'm this. I have this. Give me things. Give me gigs. Give me that. I've always been Mr. Go Get It Yourself. Well, now there's been enough noise made that slowly I'm starting to see a little bit of stuff coming my way. Like, this was a gig that just called. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going right. to do my best to put my foot in this hoe and, <laughs> and leave a mark because the people on this show and the gatekeepers in charge of booking it need to know they're there. You're now on, on notice. I am the real deal. It's not just flash in the pan. Uh, TikTok fans that you can write off to be like, they don't know comedy. Do they? Or do they not? Because I'm funny for real, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna act up here on Sunday and prove my point as you know, a reason that I should have been closing the show out in the first place. If anybody's questioning, right. you know, so I don't know. We'll see. So that's where I'm at with it. I'm happy, and um, you know, but I would love to have a uh, um a person that's my gal, or at the very least, I would love to have two or three women that understand and make themselves available. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a quick uh, sex story you want to close us out with? Anything that happened to you that was 
hilarious, embarrassing, anything like that before we go? Yeah, for sure. Um, when I, at my last, at, at my, um, at the, a while back, I'll just say, I was with, I was in a relationship and I don't know what happened, but the whole goddamn mattress box spring and everything slid off the side of the bed towards the window into this little space where the mattress was like up but like slumped like the bed was over here still and I, and so and we were completely sideways and we just had this moment where we looked at each other and without anything being said we just kept going it's so it was hilarious to be trying to figure out how the hell we gonna get up and everything's all stuck together and smushed and um <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know how the bed just like popped off the whole damn bed. I don't even know what. I think it was just a shitty bed, but uh, I don't yeah. know. I guess you can say, man, I can fuck a mattress right off a bed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So that was all a right. Thing. Well, it was lovely having you. Thank you so much for doing this for me or with hey, me. Hey, man, I appreciate you for thinking of me to do it. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day. You too, mama. All right. Bye bye. Peace.